Howdy, and welcome back to another devlog of me making my dream game using Rust in the Bevy game engine. This week I added walls and gases to the game. The player collides with walls and breathes oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. Walls can be placed and removed by clicking and right-clicking, and the sprite will automatically connect to nearby walls. The most exciting feature I added this week is the gas simulation. This simulation is based on Yostam's method of fluid simulation for games. My variation of the simulation can support any number of gases and reacts to walls. I also simulate temperature and diffuse it using a similar method, and I simulate pressure by using the ideal gas law. This lets me keep the moles of a gas constant inside the ship, and I think this will give many dynamic options for gameplay. Here is one example of the system in action. I am superheating the bottom left corner of the room, and you can see the pressure increases and diffuses across the room. On the temperature visualization, you can see the temperature spread out from the heated tile. On the mole view, you can see that moles are moving away from the high temperature area, and this causes pressure to stabilize across the room. I can do many things with this system like create airlocks and vent the ship to space. This system will also connect to the canister system, and I think many of the gameplay mechanics I have in mind are going to be tightly coupled to the gas system. Also I've done performance tests, and this system with a 50x50 grid on my machine takes about 5 milliseconds per frame on a single core, which is pretty good for a naive implementation on CPU. This is an embarrassingly parallel problem, so one day I might move it to a compute shader on GPU, and there are also other optimizations like putting stable tiles to sleep. Thankfully, due to Bevy running systems in parallel, this is already not in the main thread, so I'm not worried about performance right now. I've put a good bit of work into understanding Sam's paper and adapting it to my needs, so I want to share my mathematical understanding of the work for a minute. The basic idea is we have a grid of tiles, and we want to update their pressure. This happens by moving gases between the tiles to simulate diffusion. For a given tile P, the next pressure would be the current pressure plus all the gases coming from the neighbors, minus the gas going to the neighbors. To simplify, let's consider a tile with only two neighbors. Stam's paper claims this equation isn't a viable way to calculate diffusion for games because simulating this leads to unstable behavior. He instead proposes a solution where we find the pressure value that one time step ago would have given us our current pressure. He argues this method is stable while the naive way is unstable. So here we have the current pressure equaling the next pressure minus what came from the neighbors and then adding back what this tile would have given them. Here we can solve for next pressure and this gives us the equation he uses in the paper. And then we iterate this method a couple of times per frame to find the correct p-values for the next frame. Notice we need to iterate here because this tile's next pressure depends on the next pressure of its neighbors, so this is a giant linear system we are solving. We can generalize this to any number of neighbors, which gives us a way to simulate walls, the edges of the gas grid, and even things like vents or holes. One final bit of complexity I added was to allow different diffusion rates for each tile. This way tiles with a higher temperature diffuse faster. I can also support different rates for different gases, but I don't use that right now. I diffuse both moles and temperature in my gases. This is important because I want moles to be what is held constant on the ship, and pressure is just derived from temperature and moles by the ideal gas law. I hope that made some sense, and I highly recommend trying to implement this paper as it's a very rewarding experience and I've only covered the diffusion section. I think my understanding of this technique is going to be very important for implementing more systems. For example, I can now simulate a tile in a pseudo-neighbor like an open canister, and I believe that I can run that diffusion pair separate from the main grid pass. In my testing, I have found some good values that hold the number of moles of each gas constant, but I am always tweaking them to balance performance, stability, and gameplay. Also, because I'm simulating gases using the ideal gas law, I can actually heat a canister and the pressure inside it will go up. The meter on the canister now indicates how close it is to max pressure, and next time I hope to make it possible for them to explode. That's all I have to show for this week. I find playing with the gases to be very enjoyable, and I think this feature has turned out quite well. Let me know in the comments if you prefer seeing the math over the code, or any feedback you have on that section of the video. As always, the source to this project is on the GitHub link in the description, but be warned I'm still early on in the hacking phase on this project. Please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.